wants to that they want to know all well, this. I've heard some of the stories, but I mean, it's nice to hear it again. Well, I don't would remember it to heard tell the it. Queen, have you ever heard the Queen no, Elizabeth story? No, leaving from the. No, that, that, see, I, this, I, this is I, things that I just learned. Anyway, you asked about leadership. The, the commanding officer of the division was a general. Mm -hmm. And we probably had 50 or 60 divisions in Europe at the time. I mean, there was a lot of people there. And then the, the, uh, the units that were divided, the three units that I just told you about, they were led by a colonel or a lieutenant colonel. And then lower than that could be maybe the 56th Armored Infantry Battalion. He could have been a major. And then the companies were led by, usually by captains. And we had a captain whose name was Drass, Captain Drass. And he was one heck of a good guy. I think he was wounded three times, wow. came back each time to take over again. But the guy I told you about before, who was not, not liked or appreciated, was the first lieutenant. He was assistant yeah. company commander, and every time the captain got hurt, he took over, and he was cowardly. Mm. He's the guy who met us in the basement and said, what are you doing smoking in the company command post? And uh, the day I was wounded, he was killed. Ooh. He was walking, they, they told me later, he was walking down the street, right in the middle of the street, and they were shot and killed. Gosh. Because he was always in the back. He was always in a basement or behind a hedge or behind a wall or something giving orders for you guys up there. Yeah. And he was protected. He always. Yeah. And so I didn't like him much. No. <laughs> okay. Now what have, well now I've heard, now I've heard something else. Okay. Uh, so Dad's wounded in what city? Country. Country. I mean, in the country, farmland. I don't know exactly where okay, I was. Okay, so tell us what happened. Where'd you go? Okay, we were in a little town over. That, yeah, and tell about the about the person coming over to you and all that. I, I, cause I like to hear that. You mean the medic? Yeah. Okay, we were in a small town. Don't ask me where I was. I didn't know. It was like stopping out there in front of that building on the highway. And where the devil are we? I don't know. I think it's North Carolina, but it could be. You know, I don't know. Right. I didn't know where I was. So in the morning we, we would mount up, we're going so and so and so and so, and off we went in convoy to wherever, I don't know. We dismounted, no, no, more, no more half tracks, no more tanks, just foot, foot soldiers. And we walked on a kind of a pathway alongside a drop off, and I think there was water down there, I'm not sure. In a beautiful country, beautiful. And we came to the end of that wooded area and a big field was there. Absolute, beautiful farmland, beautiful day, the sun was out, the birds were chirping, it was warming up, April, very, very nice. And they formed a, a long line to walk across this field. And you could see probably 200 yards slightly down and ahead of us, the woods there. And then over in that direction, 300 yards maybe, it opened up and then there was a house. Mm -hmm. All the rest of, us in be oh, rest of it in between was open, just plain open, nothing growing, right. just open. What's to fear here? Right. So we opened up, we got, a, we got this long line. And the last thing in the world I thought about was enemy action, the very last. And I was very cautious. Mm. I got into the habit of looking ahead of me as far as that chair, to see if I could see a low spot, rocks or a ditch or whatever, just a hollow, in case I have to dive to get down, that's right. where I was going to go. And then I looked for the next, that was my habit. Right. right. <clears throat> Nothing happened today. Beautiful day. And suddenly, I found myself on my back, looking at the sky, in horrible pain. I didn't feel, I didn't hear the shot. I didn't feel it enter. Mm. I, I don't know how, I just f fell down. Yeah. It knocked me down, and after I got down, I don't know how long I was down on my back, seconds no doubt, 
And I'm looking at that sky and I thought to myself, that's the last time I'm going to see the sky. My whole torso was on fire. It was just like burning with gasoline. Mm. And I couldn't talk, I couldn't move, I couldn't yell for help, nothing. I was just there. Mm. So that's when the medic came up to me and he said, I'm going to give you a shot of morphine and that'll help right. ease the pain. And that was the start of that. <sighs> Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so yeah. then I was taken to what was known as a battalion aid station. That was the nearest medical help to a frontline action. And it was in a little store, an empty store, and I, they didn't do much to me there except maybe buy a bandage my up, me up a little more. I don't remember getting bandaged up out in the field. Maybe I wasn't. Yeah. But a, a jeep came, a medical jeep, and on the, on, the, on the right side next to the driver, the place where you could put a... a Body. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about the other part of it. Board, <laughs> yeah, like a, yeah. Yeah, a board, like yeah. Stretcher. A, a makeshift, yeah, stretcher. Yeah. So I was Very. up there on a stretcher, and we went to the battalion aid station, and I was... We don't answer phones on, on days like this. Hello? This is in France, right? Let me just see if this one goes You're just speaking? Oh, you know what? I canceled that. I had a, I had a, a cough and 